In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the specific things that you need to do as an Amazon seller to build a successful Amazon business. If you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. And over the last year, two years or so, I've had the opportunity to speak with hundreds, if not thousands of different Amazon sellers. And in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the common factors that all of these successful Amazon sellers have. And once we break down those factors, we're gonna go ahead and jump into my computer and I'll show you exactly how to start sourcing profitable inventory for your Amazon business. But if you're brand new to the channel or want even more free resources to learn how to sell on Amazon. Link directly beneath me is our completely free Amazon seller Discord community. There's over 39,000 people in there sharing a ton of free information. Would love to see you in there, but let's go ahead and jump into the video. So the first thing that I think is extremely important as you're starting your Amazon business is to test the idea, right? Right now you're probably sitting at home, you're wondering, does this thing even work? Like does selling on Amazon work? So the first thing that successful Amazon sellers do is they start out wide and not deep. So before you start selling on Amazon, I'm sure you're very hesitant if this even works. You know, you're watching some guy on the internet telling you, you can make money selling on Amazon. I'm sure you've seen several other videos as well. Maybe you're on a YouTube binge. But the first thing that I see a lot of successful Amazon sellers do, especially right when they're starting, you don't have that concept proved to you, right? You're watching YouTube videos, you're poking around. Maybe you've bought an item or two. It hasn't sold yet, but going out there and just starting to get the reps in is the best way you can start your Amazon business successfully. And specifically within that, when you're starting your business, I want you to go wide and not deep. And so what I mean by that is when you're sourcing products to sell on your Amazon business, make sure you source a couple units of a whole bunch of different things, especially at the start, because you're going to make mistakes. It's only natural, right? You're starting something brand new. Maybe this is your first business. Like you got to have a little bit of grace with yourself. You're going to make some mistakes. So while you're learning and making those mistakes, make sure number one, you're getting plenty of at bats. So you're buying plenty of different products. Maybe you buy five units of 10 different products. That's going to teach you a whole lot more than if you bought 50 units of one product. So while you're going out there and sourcing inventory, make sure you're spreading your business a little bit wide at the start. That's going to teach you a ton of lessons as you go. Maybe you lose 20 bucks here, 50 bucks here, but those are going to be lessons that are going to be super, super valuable to you in the long term of your business. So the next thing that successful Amazon sellers do is they do, they don't just talk about it, right? They don't just watch YouTube videos. They go out there and do it. When you go out there and source your first couple products, it's going to feel like rocket science. A lot of people are going to go back to the drawing board, keep watching YouTube videos, but the absolute best way you can grow your business is just by doing it. It sounds ridiculous to even say, but you're not going to grow if you're not doing it, right? And so as I've been able to talk to a ton of different Amazon sellers, obviously the ones who do really, really well at the start are the ones who are just willing to take action. They go do it. They don't just watch it. They don't just talk about it. And so if that's you and you've been watching a ton of YouTube videos, you haven't been doing it yet. I'm going to do something crazy, destroy my retention, whatever. If that's you and you're on hour four of a YouTube binge about selling on Amazon, go just buy some products. Like just go test out the idea. Go see if it works for you. Go spend a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever you have to do to prove the concept to yourself so you can start going deeper and deeper on these products. And so as you're going out and starting a successful Amazon business by actually doing it, another thing that almost every successful Amazon seller I know does is they go out there, they network, they make connections with other Amazon sellers. If you watch my content, you probably are tired of hearing me talk about this, but making Amazon seller friends is the absolute best thing you can do for your Amazon business. There genuinely might not be anything more important for your business than having one or two friends to sound ideas off. You're going to be able to help each other know where to source. You're going to be able to navigate different account health issues, all this kind of stuff, especially if you're a first time business owner, there's going to be a lot of random stuff that comes up that you're not thinking about right now. And having that person to kind of walk through it with, even if they're at your same level and you both don't know, you can both mutually figure it out. And there's a ton of value in that. So if you want to take your Amazon business seriously, and you haven't started making those connections yet, I'll drop a shameless plug. Go join the free discord I mentioned at the beginning of this video, start messaging directly directly start DMing people who are kind of similar to your sales level, similar to your vibe, you know, just people you want to get along with and have a great time sourcing products together. And so now that you're going out there, you're practicing getting in the reps, you're buying a bunch of different products, spreading yourself a little bit thin so you can learn a bunch of lessons. You're starting to make Amazon seller friends. Once you're set up like that, the next thing that you're going to start running into is just a bunch of little tiny problems, right? As with any business, there's going to be little complications that come up here and there. Maybe you start getting order cancellations from one of your websites you like to source a bunch of product from. Maybe you get your first IP complaint, all that kind of stuff. There's going to be a ton of small problems that arise within your business. That's the nature of owning a business, right? So something that all successful Amazon Amazon sellers can do is problem solve, right? So I get a ton of DMs and questions over on Instagram. And usually within those questions, I can tell who's going out taking it seriously. And then who's the type of person who's just saying, how do I start, right? That's fine. If you're one of those people, I'm happy to answer your question. I'm not mad at you by any means. But the common theme that I've seen among a ton of different Amazon sellers is they're not asking the how do I start question. They're asking how do I start to Google? They're getting down the rabbit hole and then maybe they start sourcing with Selleramp and they're like, uh, where's a good starting point to start doing some reverse 
reverse sourcing? That's a much better question, right? That's a question that's not as easily answerable with Google. And so as these problems start rising up in your business, you're not in school anymore. You don't have a job. You don't have any boss. There's no one above you, right? So there's no one to tell you when things are going wrong. You're the guy who has to know when things are going wrong and be able to address those things. So if you really want to be successful on Amazon, having those problem solving skills is extremely important. I know it sounds basic, but it's very, very important. And if you think you lack those problem solving skills, go and make up for that with your networking, right? Go make friends, go make friends with people that you can ask stupid questions to, right? Like that's why we go make friends because we want to be able to ask those dumb questions, the stuff that we know we should know, but bouncing those ideas off each other, being able to solve those problems yourself, all of that is massive as you're trying to grow a successful business. So that's kind of the mindset portion of being a successful Amazon seller tackled, right? Make sure you're fully set up for success. Go make friends. Just go try it. Go do it. Like there's so many people who are going to watch this YouTube video. They're going to think, oh, it's a great idea. They're going to go watch hours and hours more of YouTube videos and they're never going to pull the trigger, spend a hundred bucks and test it out. So whenever you think about selling on Amazon or just a project in general, especially something like this with online arbitrage, you can start with a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. And let's say you try it, you hate it, you don't like it. Okay. You lost 200 bucks, maybe 300 bucks after some Amazon fees, some software, whatever. The flip side of that is you go spend 200 bucks. You make maybe 50 bucks on that in profit. You go do it again. Now you've got 250. And then a few months later, you're really seriously working that up and you've seriously changed your life. And the whole downside was like a few hundred bucks, maybe a few hours of research, setting some stuff up. So now that you're fully ready to take action in your Amazon business, as I said at the beginning, let's go ahead and jump into my computer over here and I'll show you probably my favorite way to start finding products if you're brand new to selling on Amazon. So in my opinion, the best way to start finding inventory is with a method called reverse sourcing. So the reason I went ahead and pulled up this specific great value brand product, you can start from, you know, any store brand that's at different retail stores. You can start with Nike, like whatever brands you want to start selling. Basically what we need here is a list of other sellers who are doing online arbitrage. In this case, the reason I picked a great value is because we know that you can only buy great value stuff from Walmart. So they're clearly buying this from Walmart, selling it on Amazon. So what that tells me is when I scroll down on seller amp over here, I can see the other sellers who are on this listing. And I'm going to go ahead and filter just by prime sellers, that two day prime shipping. What this tells me is all of these 10 sellers, looks like we got a few more we can load in here as well. All of these guys are buying inventory from Walmart. And so we know if they're buying some inventory from Walmart, they're likely buying a good percentage, if not all their inventory from Walmart, Target, Vitacost, sites like that, right? So now we need to go ahead and start digging into these sites. And so I'm going to look for someone who has, you know, maybe 50 feedback. We could start there. This one sticks out to me for whatever reason. It doesn't really matter. Basically, we just need to start digging into to the storefronts of other Amazon sellers. Number one, this is going to give you a really good idea of what other people are selling. Hopefully they're selling all this profitably. It's not always the case, right? So as you're going through here, you're going to want to start looking at the inventory, see what's selling quickly. Using Selleramp, you can also see the max cost option. So for example, I'm looking at something like this, like these Fuji films or whatever. The BSR of 242 is really good. That means it's like selling insanely fast. The max cost here, this tells me that I need to buy this item for under $20.26 for it to meet my profit threshold. In this case, it's 35% ROI and minimum profit $3. So when I look at an item like this one up here, I know that I obviously can't buy this item for negative $2.84. So we can keep on scrolling past that one. This item, however, does stick out to me. And there's probably going to be, you know, there's, it's probably going to be really hard to get. Like there's a reason that it has such a high bestseller rank and it's also a pretty high price in terms of what you're getting, right? So I would just go ahead and search for this product on Google. And it looks like potentially this product is selling at Walmart for 23 bucks. Really, I'm just trying to get an idea of everywhere that I could potentially buy this product from. And so when I click through to this Walmart listing here, number one, I'm checking the price. So it's still about 23 bucks. This actually is in stock. So I actually might go ahead and investigate this a little further. This seems like something that we might not have supposed to caught in stock, or uh, it could be a little bit more ex too expensive for what we're getting. In this case, that bestseller rank is super, super low. So sometimes you, you know, you're compromised on those profit thresholds a little bit to really take advantage of the velocity. See, in this case, we can sell this item selling like 4,000 times a month. So in this case, it's telling me I'm gated. I'm not really worried about that. It's fairly easy to get ungated. If you're looking to get ungated in a specific brand or category, you can check the ungating channel of the free Discord I mentioned a couple times now. Search, in this case, I would just search the brand Fujifilm, see what other people have come up with. So now I wanna see if I'm profitable at that. If I buy it for 23 bucks, that seems a little bit too expensive compared to where it's been in the past. So over the last 30 days, SellerAmp is telling me the average buy box price has been $36. So I'll go ahead and plug in 23 bucks there. So this is profitable. It would be really, really, really hard to 
lose money on this item, to be honest, just because the velocity is so high. In this case, the ROI is a little lower than I'd like to look for, especially if this is your first product you're gonna be selling on Amazon. This would be really, really low. Another thing that I'm interested in when I'm looking at this particular Keepa chart is I can go ahead and mouse in here just a little bit, maybe go ahead and zoom in. And so on this Keepa chart, the buy box is showing me the price where someone comes in, they click add to cart. I wanna see on an item with high velocity, you see how the prices kind of jump around a little bit. So this guy's making sales at $34 down here, but you know, five minutes ago, this guy sold it for $37. So when you're selling items like this, if you set your minimum price or your repricer or whatever you wanna to use to be at these higher prices. So you can see every now and then the buy box kind of jumps up to like $39 or $40, especially on an item that's selling this fast, you could definitely squeeze out some profit here. So if you come onto this listing and you just list it 40 bucks, you're not gonna make nearly as many sales. You're gonna be making 30% ROI, $7 profit per unit, not too bad at all, right? So plus whatever cash back and all that kind of stuff you can get buying it from Walmart. And another thing to look out for here, kind of digging into the weeds on using Keepa, you can see the new offer count on this item kind of went down and you can see the price reacted to that. So as we zoom in here, let me get a little more granular with that. Simplify it a little bit. Let's make it as not confusing as possible. So let's look at this one right here. So last July, it looks like, or earlier this year in July, there was 137 people selling it. The price was kind of hanging out at like 37. Every now and then it was jumping up to like 43 bucks. And then for whatever reason, maybe it got hard to buy. Like I was saying, I don't think this item, I bet if you go check it right now, it'll be out of stock. I may end up picking up some of these, honestly. You can see down here, the price went down to $80 and the price naturally just kind of hung out at a much higher price price. So worst case, it was jumping down to 40, but it was going all the way up to like 47, 43, like a pretty solid price range for where we're buying this item. It went back up to 180 sellers. Price went back to 37 bucks, 36 bucks. And now it's back on the way down. And you can already see the kind of trend line with the buy box right here going up. And so this really tells me that the price is likely to increase, kind of really getting into the weeds using Keepa here. This is kind of stuff you're going to get really good at over time as you start learning how to sell on Amazon. So what this tells me, the new sellers are going down. It could be continuing to go down. Maybe I got lucky or maybe a bunch of this came back in a stock. Really, there's no way to know. But all I can do is look at the past history of this item. Last time the sellers were going down, the price went way up. So reasonably, I could buy this item and expect that the price might go up, especially since right now, while we're recording this, we're heading into Christmas season, you know, film. That would be a pretty reasonable thing to use a lot of around the holidays, taking pictures with family. This would also be like, you know, hobby kind of stuff that you'd give under the Christmas tree. So I bet this sells faster during Q4. In fact, we could also test that theory. You know, last year during December, November, November, it was a 2000 sales rank. And then as soon as we started getting into December, it looks like the sales rank dropped and dropped and dropped as we got closer to Christmas. And you can even see there was a tiny increase right here. I mean, it also just seems like this listing got a lot more popular. So it's hard to tell what was happening in this case, but I would expect this price to increase once again. So we're going to be selling this for at least 40 bucks. Probably right now we could already go in here and capture those high price sales at $40. And if the price continues to increase back to where it was pretty recently, we could expect to sell this item for 43 bucks, maybe even 45 bucks. Really just depends on where things go. So this could be something worth picking up, especially since it sells so fast. Maybe you get 12 of these, 24 of these, put your price at 40 bucks, 42 bucks, and let the items come in, make those first couple profitable sales. I also just want to go ahead and show you guys that this really does work. I really am doing this stuff. So this is a live screenshot, just an example product that I sold back about last year. We were buying this kind of, it was like an herbal tea blend, some kind of weird thing. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Really, you're just selling the data on the product. So we were buying them for seven bucks from a website called Vita cost. And then we are flipping them on Amazon for about 15 bucks. Looks like this one went for 20 bucks. A lot of these were hanging out at 1490, making three bucks profit every time, 46% ROI. So this doesn't seem like a lot, right? You find this product, you're like, I'm only making three bucks, but we were able to sell over 500 of these. And after it was all said and done, we net over $2,000 in profit just because we noticed a pricing discrepancy between Vita cost and what the prices people were paying on Amazon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a ton of value out of it. If you're in the early to intermediate stages of your Amazon business and you want to grow a lot faster, you can check out the FBA roadmap. It's going to be linked down below. It's our complete course shows you pretty much step-by-step -step everything you need to do, private community, weekly Zoom calls, all that kind of stuff to make sure you're well set up for success. So if you've got a little bit of capital, you want to grow fast, go ahead and check that out. A ton of people are finding a lot of success with the FBA roadmap. If you're somebody who's got 500 to a thousand bucks, just go ahead and start hustling, sell some books, do some of this stuff that we showed on the video today. And I'd love to help you scale your business faster. Once you've got a little bit more capital. But if you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, I'm always happy to answer those down below in the comment section. If you did get value out of today's video, please feel free to hit the subscribe button, like, all that good stuff helps me out with the algorithm. But I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.